welcome to another edition of The Player and we've got a Volvo. Well, it's not just any Volvo. Um, the stigma of Volvos, um, well, when I was a kid my dad had one and we used it for pulling a caravan and they are notoriously known for being the caravaner's car of choice but definitely not this one. This one is all singing and dancing, it is the top of the range and I think Volvo have now nailed it when it comes to a proper proper estate car. It's got seven seats in this car, it's got masses of luggage space. Let's get in, let's go around and I'll tell you all the bits and pieces that this car comes with and what it runs on. So here we are in the Volvo XC90 and what a lovely place to be. If this car could wrap you up in cotton wool it would do. This car was developed by Volvo, it almost has its own motoring angel floating around them. And where I'm going with that is, this car has so much tech, so much safety tech, so much so, it is the safest car in the UK, categorically. The statistics have proved it. So, building a, a car like this, there's so much goes into it. For instance, you're driving around in town and Volvo have developed a thing called City Safety. Now city safety is very simple, it's basically any stray dog or cat or maybe a cyclist or a motorcyclist pulls out on you, this car will autonomously brake immediately, so quick you, you wouldn't even have time to move your foot from the accelerator to the, the, the brake pedal. It's just you know done in a split second and it does it automatically. Um, driving along like this the car has a lane departure warning system as well and it will autonomously again correct you if you start to wander slightly over the lane there and it'll bring you back in take your hands off the wheel for more than a few seconds it'll warn you it will let you know exactly what's going on um, there's these beautiful blind spot mirrors and I really like them they're quite large and orange they're not that little dot that you normally get they're proper long you know even in the sunlight you can see it um, pilot assist on the cruise control system on this car is also fantastic so you can set the cruise control as you do in any normal car but then you can also set the distance between you and the other car very similar to the Mercedes system but I like this particular system very easy to use it comes up on the screen and you can set it within seconds it's not one of those fiddly jobs that you have to do when you're in certain other cars um, active high beam on this as well the active high beam is superb when you're driving along you've got your full beam on a car comes around the corner this car detects the lights from the other car and will immediately dip the beam for you so it takes all that brain power out of having to think the car is almost driving for you um, there's a beautiful heads up display which I'm currently looking at we're cruising at 70 miles an hour it's so quiet in here I've got the speed limiters come up on there I can see the signs and everything you can almost pre-program the heads up to how you want it to look as well which is really good you can maneuver it in any position um, there's, there's so many bits and pieces on this car I could probably spend a hundred miles just sitting there talking to you so I'll just go through some of the real good stuff that I've found on it it has a cooled glove box now you're thinking why would I want a cool glove box? How many times have you put a chocolate bar in the glove box or left it in the car and you've come back and the damn thing has melted and it's disgusting and it's stuck to everything? Well, this car, that's not gonna happen because you can put it in the cooled glove box, which I think is really cool. Um, oh, really cool, there you go, to avoid a pump. It's got a fabulous eight-speed gearbox on it. Silky smooth, it's very, very quick. And obviously this car developing 310 brake horsepower, the petrol version, it's it's got bags of torque there. And, you know, that gearbox just copes with it so well. There's lots of other bits and pieces, like the suspension on this is just phenomenal. It's so smooth, and with those larger 22-inch alloys, it creates a lovely, quiet driving motion as well. Um, the actual car itself, well, they don't really come much better to be honest. This one's got a heated steering wheel, a heated front screen. It's even got heated washer nozzles. Now it was developed in Sweden and they do have temperatures below zero there for most of the year. So that's probably why they thought about that because you can still wash your windscreen. Doesn't mean to say that it doesn't heat the water so when it comes out it's probably gonna freeze all over the screen anyway. I'm sure they've thought of that if you've got a heated screen going on there. This car itself is 69,000 pounds on the road. 
and that's with all the added extras that you've added into it. But the base price of these cars start around 50,000, and I'll tell you more about that at the end of this review. So let's crack on, let's take a walk around the car, let's have a look at what else this car has to offer the motorist. So, it's a Volvo at the end of the day, but isn't it a striking looking Volvo? I mean, this is a handsome car, no doubt about it. The grille at the front, this lovely sweeping curves, these LED lights that sweep around the side. Volvo have really started to nail it with the look, looks wise here, I think. Um, the cars come in three different versions of the two litre engine. There's a diesel, um, developing around about 178 brake horsepower. There's the petrol one, which is this one, it's called the T6 and this develops about 305 brake horsepower, which is pretty good. And then there is the petrol hybrid version, or electric as they call it, petrol stroke electric, and that, believe it or not, develops over 400 brake horsepower. Now that's because, obviously, you've got an electric engine combined with a petrol engine, so you get the extra 87 horsepower comes from the electrical side. That's your technical stuff. Let's check around the car. There is a fantastic set of wheels on this particular car. These are 22 inch rims. Does it really warrant 22 inch rims? Well, to be honest, I think it does because with the bigger wheel, you get a much better ride in the car and it's much quieter as well. But on the standard car, these come in 19 and 20 inch. So depending on what you want. This is the T6. This is the top of the range uh, for the petrol engine only size. It's a really really lovely car to drive plenty of torque plenty of power we'll get into that in a minute when we're sitting inside uh, 0 to 60 time on this is around six seconds that's not bad for a seven seater family car i mean that's pretty spectacular to be honest but downside on this particular car and i've experienced it a lot it guzzles fuel it loves to drink it's doing 25 to the gallon even though volvo claim it should be doing about 34 35 so, as usual, not get into that specification that is, you know, delivered to us when we buy it. Let's take a look down the side of the car. Lovely lines, beautifully designed. Very, very in keeping with the new modern Volvo look that we're getting. Nothing like the old box-shaped versions of these cars that we used to see. It's a proper, proper lovely car. And I'm quite actually proud to drive around it. You get a lot of looks from people as well. So let's cut there because I want to show you the amazing boot on this and how the seven seats actually work on the new Volvo XC90 T6. So the Volvo XC90, front striking looks, rear striking looks too. It all starting to add up on the design front with lovely sweeping lights down here. Got these inset cut lights there, the twin exhaust, it's proper compact. Volvo have come up with another idea as well, which is a superb little thing when you've got two bags of shopping, or you're carrying a young child, or you've got a, even picking a dog up to put in the back. Just use your foot to slide under like that, and the boot automatically opens without you having to do it. Naturally, if it's locked, you've got to have the key in your pocket, because this is a keyless system. And if you haven't got that in there, nobody can just walk up to the car and put their foot underneath. So don't worry about that. Okay, so the first thing you notice inside, even with seven seats up, this has bags of room. And it's probably about the same size as a decent hatchback in here. But here comes one of the first butts, parcel shelf. Now, they haven't considered where to put that. So if you are using all seven seats and then you want to put the dog in or the shop in, this thing's in the way, it's just flopping around. So I'm going to grab it and take it out of the way. But it's not, you know, it's not going to stop you buying one of these, but it could have been thought out a little bit better considering all the other things that they've done with this car. First of all, there is a lovely little cubby space under here, plenty of room. I love my fishing. All my bits go in under here. I can put the top down, bang like that, clip it into place, stick the dogs in the back, whatever else I want. Everything's hidden away in there. Below that, when you lift that up, Again, this is a great thing Volvo have thought of, a space saver. Now we all know with the modern cars, now, nowadays you just get a self-inflator, one of those little stupid pump things. What's going to happen if you crunch a wheel on a curb, or for some reason the wheel completely sheds on you? Well, you're going to be stuck, but with this, space saver, way forward. That's the way it should be. Lock that down. Another nice little bit in the back here, 12 volt adapter. This not only is for using your 
hoover and things like at the back, but the passengers in the seven seat side can also charge their devices from here. Good thinking. Up here is a little clip. Another great little thing that I love. If you've got a bag of shopping, the handles go neatly over there and the shopping just sits there. It's perfect. Shopping doesn't go flying everywhere and you still keep the space in the middle. Brilliant thinking. Okay, now it gets starts to get really good. So you wanna lift something up and put it in the back when the seats are down. We'll show you that in a second. Well, Volvo have thought of that as well because here, by pushing that button, you will see the air suspension allows the car to drop. At that point, you're not lifting something up heavy above where you should be. You're down here and you're just lifting it in. And when it's in, up she goes again. Fantastic, we love it. Back seats, check out how much space. When you're not using seven seats, now we're talking easy pop down, one either side, headrest fold as well. Check out the size of that. That is just humongous. And you've still got five seats in the front there. So it's almost like you've got an estate with an extra bit in the back of it. We're loving this, totally loving it. So, stuff guards on the back here as well, which I forgot to mention, so I've just mentioned now. We love this car, it really is stunning. And I've driven it a lot of miles. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's cut and have a look what it's like to sit in the back on those seven seats. In the back of the XE90, there is bags of room and it's, well, you'd expect it. Look at it, it's just stunning. Loads of leg room. And these seats can go up and down as well, so you can actually manipulate them, which is lovely. Sit right back and just totally relax. Um, bags of headroom, absolutely tons of it. And up here, beautiful panoramic sunroof, and it's got a sun curtain as well, which uh, during the last few months here in the UK, you'd want a sun curtain, trust me, it's been like the Sahara Desert. In the centre, separate heating controls, aircon naturally. The only thing is, stepping over, you do have the big lump in the middle, as usual. 12 volt adapter down the bottom here. And above it, when I release this, you're gonna see something I have never seen in the back of a car. That, in the UK, is a 13 amp plug adapter. So you just stick your plug in there, and anything off of it will run. I haven't tested it yet, but it's pretty amazing. That is something very different. Normally, you just have the two USBs. So, you've seen in the back here, um, must show you these little bits so the centerpiece here pull down and we've got two little cup holders very nice again nice armrest as well i mean the whole thing is very comfortable especially with the leather and this in itself you can pull this down if you want a larger area so yeah i love it let's get in the back and see how comfortable those two rear seats are and how easy it is to get in and out. Because I've read the Volvo manual and it says in the back, because of the shape of the roof, if you're over 170 centimeters high, you're gonna hit your head on the ceiling. And I'm 176, but let's just check it out. Cut to there. So let's see how difficult it is to get in the back in those two extra seats. And it's quite simple that you lift and shift this forward. This one back here comes forward. There we go. Now you should be able to just climb. It is a bit awkward, but at the end of the day, I'm not a kid. And this was designed for a couple of kids. Let's have a look. It's pretty tight, but then Volvo did say 170 centimeters. Mind you, yeah, I could sit here. It's not that bad. Got a cup holder here. And there's a little sort of area here for putting knickknacks. And once again, as I said, you've got the 12 volt behind you, so if you do need to charge any of your gizmos, it's quite easy just to bung the little cable through there. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's the most comfortable, but at the end of the day, it's seven seats, three adults here, two kids in the back, two dogs behind there. This car is absolutely amazing in my opinion. So let's check out up the front here. Well, first thing you'll notice when you get in it is the comfort level. It's well bolstered, got lovely seats. Look, it's even got a little Swedish flag on there. Just to remind you, this car was built and designed by Swedish people, who we love, by the way. It is a lovely place to be. It's got a massive, great screen in the center here. The only thing is, before I switch on, I want you to see, keeping that screen clean is horrendous. As you'll see, there's loads of finger marks everywhere. 
and it's very difficult to clean and within minutes of cleaning it it's back again it just makes you feel like you've got dirty fingers for some reason little little bit of a bugbear by my side um, keyless ignition as we said earlier so I've got the key in my pocket foot on the brake and it's just a turn now to start the car very very simple eight speed auto gearbox super smooth super quick as well especially with this model with the petrol engine it's got that little bit more torque and that gearbox needs that inside here let's start with what spaces we've got so it's a decent area in there you could get a decent little water bottle in there you've got two su two usbs in there let's have a look here so we've got double cup holder that's quite generous actually you could get a decent sized cup in there and a 12 volt adapter in here is just a little place to put your loose change and your knickknacks for whatever you need so let's shut all that down again one thing we do have is three different driving modes on this car so here you'll see it says drive mode if you push that it will come up here it's actually offering me four but i consider it's three because the off-road setting to be honest with you it's no different to what the setting is on all the driving I'll go back again because it comes up comfort eco dynamic and off-road so there you go very simple to adjust as well just push that slide up and down leave it on dynamic for the moment digital display here <coughs> excuse me it's telling me the boots open at the moment and two doors are open and I'm sitting in the front driver's seat so either side very very simple to use steering wheel cruise control over here again very simple touch to activate plus minus resume so easy over here this will give you a menu system that will come up here on the actual display itself and you can maneuver left, right, front, backwards, up and down. Nice and simple, there you go. Music has just decided to come on so the DAB radio has kicked in. We'll go through that now <coughs> here on the screen. Sat nav, big bugbear of mine on this car. The sat nav on this car, I'm afraid to say, is completely useless. Um, it really needs sorting out. I've put in many postcodes, it doesn't recognise them, doesn't recognise road names. I'm not that stupid when it comes to these things, I do it every week and this one is a pain. It doesn't really do what it's supposed to do. So you can go full screen, normal screen, there's a 3D setting. Not a lover of this, uh, this nav system. One thing I do like on this sound system, this has an amazing Bowers and Wilkins sound system. You can have your Spotify on here. You can link up via your Bluetooth on your phone. You can actually connect up via the USB and it will come straight in here, which is all great. My phone is already connected, as you can see. And aircon wise, well, pretty simple again. Lovely touch system, auto climate, back to manual. Set your temperatures here, up and down. And you can do likewise with the rear. So you can go rear climate, exactly the same. And then you can actually set up preconditioning so you can start the car up and get it nice and warm before you get in it and it will set it up so it knows exactly what temperature you like when you get in the car car itself well to open the uh, glove box here you push this little button here very neat but if you look now if a passenger's sitting in there it's forever hitting their knees no matter how far that that seat is pushed back it's a fairly decent sized glove box as well the car itself, well, I've driven it almost a thousand miles now, and my biggest bugbear, as I said, was the 25 miles to the gallon, and that is all I'm getting. So it's a little bit heavy on the pocket. Um, they do claim the petrol and the electric, the hybrid, whatever you want to call it, over a hundred miles to the gallon. Really? Well, bring it on, send it over to me. If that does a hundred miles to the gallon, I'll eat my hat and I'll come on YouTube and apologize to everyone because no way. Even the diesel is saying 34. Pfft. Will it do it? I don't know. Because this definitely isn't doing what it's supposed to do. And at 25, not very happy about that. Apart from that, I think this is a super family car. And it really isn't fit for pulling a caravan because it's too classy. I think it's stunning. We'll talk about price in a minute and the finance options that you can get on this car when we finalise this video. There you have it, the Volvo XC90 T6. What a cracking car. There are three different variants that you can buy. There is the Momentum, the Inscription, and an R design. Starts on the road from around 50,000 pounds, which in my opinion for a seven seater car of this magnitude is pretty good value for money. 
you can get finance options on this from around about £450 a month, including VAT. So if you're a company owner, this could be a good buy for you. I've loved it, I've really loved it. I've enjoyed and loved this car so much. It's been stunning, it's not let me down on any situation. It's a cracking car to drive. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you like what you're watching, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Smash it, it's down there, you know where it is. If you would like to comment or tell me if I've missed something or want to ask me something about this car, then just hit the comment box below and I'll answer your comments. Failing that or any other things, subscribe because we do one of these every single week. It might not be a Volvo, it could be a Seat, it could be an Audi, it could be any different car. Tell me what car you'd like to see. You've been watching the player, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next week with another car.